It's the Real Estate Podcast across every state, city and town of Australia. And welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Podcast, available on iHeartRadio and also Spotify and Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts from. Well, another weekend has arrived. Yes, plenty of real estate around the country on offer for your Saturday morning. Good luck if you are transacting or attending an open home, an auction. Perhaps you're taking the wife or the husband to show them your your dream home. Whatever you are doing on this ninth day of July for 2022, have a good one around Australia. Coming up in just a moment, in fact, we're going to be talking about Canberra and the available land that is available in the ACT, or rather the shortage of it. Also, it is the final day for you to enter the Hunter Valley draw, and I'm going to give you once again the seven secret words. Write them down so that you can put yourself into the draw. It's the Main Centre Forecast with propertybuyer.com.au. All right, let's go around the country and have a look at your weather today. And first we go to Sydney where it should be a mainly dry morning, but it is going to change to one or two showers later today. Your high of 17 degrees. Melbourne, more rain in the forecast. What else is new? 13 is your forecast high. Brisbane is the place to be. It's fine with sunshine, a high of 9. 19 degrees and in Perth also expecting some showers for your Saturday and a high of 20 degrees. Well if you are celebrating your birthday for July the 9th you're in pretty good company. Tom Hanks is turning 66 years young. Having a look in the history books on this day Boris Becker stunned the tennis world by becoming the youngest player to win Wimbledon at just 17. And then decades later, unfortunately, Boris in 2022 finds himself in prison. It's your weekend real estate breakfast, a serial-sized podcast about what's happening in your local backyard. Every Saturday morning on the Real Estate Podcast. Let's invite back Katie Lee. She's from the Hunter Valley Wine and Tourism Association. Good morning, Katie. Great to have you back. Oh, good morning, Craig. Thanks for having me again. Look, I am honoured to be here talking about this beautiful destination and this amazing prize that one lucky winner is going to receive and their partner or their best friend or whoever they take with them. Yes, the romance is going to be on steroids if you are fortunate enough to win this. A reminder, of course, the applications for you to enter close at midnight tonight. So you've got all of today to get your entry form in. Okay, Katie Lee, let's just step through some of the pieces to this fantastic prize to the Hunter Valley. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got two nights accommodation at Mercure Resort Hunter Valley Gardens with breakfast included, a deluxe tasting experience with Deulius Wines, a go-kart experience with Go-Karts Go Hunter Valley, and a helicopter flight with Aero Logistics Hunter Valley. So if you're the lucky winner and you want to bring your partner along, because remember this prize is for two, this is a fantastic prize for the romantic experience in the Hunter Valley. And of course, there is also the balloon ride. There's a five-course meal. There's a whole lot more to this package that we haven't been able to talk about this morning because we've been talking about it for the last two weeks. And don't forget the seven secret words that you need. And I gave these to you yesterday. I'm just going to run through them again, give you all seven. And the first one is Mercure. The second is a loft. We've also got helicopter, chocolate, five, red salt, and awesome. Those are the seven secret words. All you need to do now is just email myrealestatepodcast at gmail.com and you are in the draw. Thank you, Katie Lee. Thanks so much for having me, Craig. Grab your coffee and switch on your real estate breakfast every weekday morning from 6.30. From first home buyers to property investors and everything in between. Every morning on the Real Estate Podcast. Well, interstate movement of people across borders has seen some areas like Canberra really take off. 
And now one of the questions being asked is, can it be sustainable with a growing population like a Canberra? And if you look at the data from the 2021 census released by the Australian Bureau of Stats, it's shown that the number of Canberra residents reached 455,000 people. Now, that is a 14.4% increase from the previous 2016 census. The increase is the highest of all states and territories in Australia. So is housing going to be able to keep up with demand? It's a good question to ask this morning and joining us on the Breakfast Podcast is Michael Hopkins who is the Chief Executive at the Master Builders Association of the ACT and good morning to you Michael, welcome to the Real Estate Podcast. Good morning to you Craig. Now the growth, it isn't a new thing in Canberra but rather the interstate movement of people is just added to an already major problem right there at the moment. Well, look, um, Canberra has been growing strongly for for many years, as you point out, and that 14.4% increase, so more than 57,000 people have moved to the ACT in the last five years, and that's really proving a strong driver for our housing market and for land sales, unit and apartment sales, and and our expectation is that this will continue for many years to come in Canberra. And just how much of a problem is land in the ACT? Because there's a ballot system taking place already for land release, and I understand that thousands of people are missing out. So tell us a little bit about what's happening with that and the general growth of the area. If you're listening to this from outside of the ACT, you'll probably find Canberra's land release system and development system fairly unique compared to most Australian states and territories. For a start, the ACT government effectively owns the land and and leases it on a long-term lease to, to residents. But also when it comes to releasing new land supply, the planning and development and even the sales and marketing of the land is actually undertaken predominantly by the ACT government through their suburban land agency. So that means effectively the government here owns a property development arm, if you like, and is competing in the market with with other property developers, um, except that uh, the SLA, the Suburban Land Agency, holds a pretty dominant position. I mean, almost every land release here is, is a government land release. Now, what that means is that, in our view, the supply of that new land hasn't kept up with the demand, it hasn't kept up with that population growth that we were talking about just before. So when there is a release of land in one of our new suburbs, there's this massive demand from buyers through the ballot system for blocks available. And to give you an idea how, how much, we're seeing you know, thousands of people applying for a stage release, which might be 50 to 100 blocks. You know, so in the order of 100 people applying for every block available. And anyone that has studied Economics 101 would understand the relationship between supply and demand and price. And that has meant our land price has been skyrocketing over the last few years um, because of that undersupply of new land into the market. It means that Canberra's housing is now, average housing is now above a million dollars. We've exceeded Melbourne's uh, average house price and and we're we're heading for Sydney to nearly be uh, Australia's most expensive capital city to buy uh, house and land, which is quite, quite amazing. And you're kind of suffering a little bit of a double whammy given that the ACT has this labour shortage. How much of a problem is the housing price point posing for attracting and bringing some of these skilled jobs into the area? Well, look, like most parts of Australia, Canberra is certainly suffering a skill shortage. In the the building and construction industry in particular, we're looking for everything from new apprentices through to experienced supervisors, project managers, construction managers. And the most common thing we hear when talking to people about moving to Canberra is how do I find a house or how do I find an apartment? Our rental vacancy is very low, so it's very difficult to rent a house or a unit or apartment. It's probably the, the number one reason or the number one barrier to, pre- to prevent people to move to Canberra for work. Even though we've got lots of jobs on offer, uh, we offer very permanent, safe, secure and well-paid positions here in Canberra, accessing housing um, is a major challenge for us to overcome. And that um, ultimately is going to affect the ACT economy. If we can't get the workers here that we need to do the work and they're more attracted to work in other parts of Australia, that will ultimately impact the ACT's economy, which which is very disappointing. 
Yeah, and I guess people are going to then just move to regional New South Wales, perhaps as a result of just not being able to buy in. And and that's precisely what we've seen. So we, we, we've seen um, new developments, particularly new new land developments, spring up in the region around the ACT in New South Wales. And you can quite easily access land within less than an hour's drive from the centre of Canberra, but in New South Wales, where land tends to be more affordable, uh, more available, uh, but it still has all the benefits of being close to you know Canberra City and the, the jobs and everything that Canberra has to offer for people are wanting to, to, to move here. It's a really a missed opportunity for the ACT because we would much rather be able to house those people within the ACT and have all of the economic benefits, the, the taxes and rates that they would pay benefit ACT residents rather than having to um, force them to move across the border into New South Wales. And what about areas like, uh, say, a western edge? Presumably that is likely to be years in the planning. So for somebody like yourself sitting in your position, you'd be hoping that politically there is a lot of action in those sorts of areas rather than just uh, talking. Uh, Certainly. And look, we were quite excited this week to hear the announcement from the ACT government that they're going to be investigating the western edge of Canberra for, for new growth areas. Because we do need to be planning these areas many years in advance so that we've got that land supply, you know, for two, three, five and and even 10 years into the future. But you're right, these projects and these investigations take a long time. So given that the ACT government is both uh, the landowner, the the developer, the planning authority, uh, and actually take the land to market, we see no, no reason why they couldn't move through this process quite quickly. And we would certainly encourage them to to get on with this as quickly as possible. Because if we don't have the new houses, the new land to, to service our, our growing population, one, we're going to see prices continue to, to skyrocket. And as we were saying before, we will see more and more people be forced to move across the border rather than find a new, new home here within the ACT. Michael, it sounds like your plate is rather full at the Master Builders Association of the ACT. Look, thank you so much for coming on and explaining that to us. And I'm sure that the audience is taking away a bit of a fresh perspective of what is happening. Thanks very much, Craig. Really appreciate the opportunity. We connect you to the best real estate information across Australia. The Real Estate Podcast. Podcast.